How you doing? Hey. Oh, good. Good, well. Good to be happy today. My name, my name is Ashley. And my name is Tommy. Love this stuff. Tommy. Yeah, welcome, guys. Hope you have a lovely Monday, Tuesday, whenever this airs. But yeah, I hope you're having a lovely week. And yeah, uh-huh. so let's get straight into it. So guys, um, yeah, so we want to discuss the message that Wally preached. Um, yeah, and he kind of was talking about the situation, you know, going on right now. He mentioned the low cost that's, um, you know, that's like the swarm of low cost that's like kind of, like um, threatening uh, Africa, you mentioned you know, the virus that's going on, as we all know, and we've all been affected by that. And um, he just um, opened like Joel, uh, uh, Joel one to ten, um, like where he kind of explained that all of those things will happen. Just want to kind of hear your perspective, guys, with everything that's going on. You know what. What do you guys say? What do you guys think about everything that's going on in the world you in general? At the Bible. <laughs> Can we just get ready? I feel like ST should start then. She's ready. No, She's I'm, ready. I'm, I'm giving you the opportunity. Yeah, but yeah, no. No, it's because, um, yeah, it was a very good message, first of all. Um, very powerful message. And I think not just powerful but also timely as well especially yeah. with everything that's going on and um it's just interesting to see how what's happening like like you mentioned in africa type of thing in terms of the locusts and stuff is kind of um like a mirror image of what he read from mm, yeah well about like um the locusts and stuff and when he was reading i was thinking i've read this so many times but <laughs> It never hit me like this. Um, yeah. so I don't know if you want to read it again so that like anyone who probably didn't Been here. hear it the first time. Um, yeah, one sec. So he read uh, Joel 1 verse, uh, from verse 2 to 10, and it says, Hear this, you elders, listen, all who live in the land. Has anything like this ever happened in your days or in your ancestors' days? Um, tell it to your children and let your children tell it to their children and their children to the next generation. What the locust swarm has left, the great locusts have eaten. What the great locusts have left, the young locusts have eaten. What the young lo- locusts have left, the other locusts have eaten. Wake up, you drunk, uh, you drunkards, and weep. Well, all oh, you drunkards of um, drinkers of wine, well before the new wine. For it has been snatched from your lips. All, um, a nation has invaded my land. A mighty army without number. It has, it has the teeth of a lion and fangs of a lioness. It has laid, um, laid waste in my vines and ruined my fig trees. It has stripped off their bark and thrown it away, leaving their branches white. Mourn like a virgin in sackcloth. Um, Grieve, um, grieving for the betrothed of her youth, gain offering and drink um, offering. Um, offerings are cut off from the house of the Lord. The priests are in mourning, those who minister before the Lord. The fields are ruined, the ground is dried up, the grain is destroyed, and the new wine is dried up and the olive tree fails. Yeah, so that was kind of mm-hmm. like what you read. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, so like I was saying, like it, it was just um, it was very interesting to see how this. Obviously, later on, we'll probably, you'll probably mention about the prophecy that comes after that, but it it was very interesting to see that that comes in terms of chapter, and who knows how, what the gap was or whatever. But in terms of us, uh, even just basic um, in terms of order. It comes after a time of chaos, basically. Mm. It comes after a time of destruction. And, um, yeah, it was just interesting to see that in the midst of all of that, in the midst of um, locusts eating up what people had stored up and stuff like that, that God was still speaking. Like, the voice of God was still very, very active, basically. 
And um, mm-hmm. if you relate that with what's currently happening now, that's basically what's happening, where things are shutting down. Um, life is basically on a standstill, but mm. the voice of God is still still going and probably even going more stronger now than ever before um, in a long time. So, yeah, it was a word of a word of hope, a word of encouragement. That's the first mm. thing I think I picked up from that first reading that Pastor Wale gave. What do you think, Tommy? What do you make of it? Um. Yeah, it just reminds me of um, Ecclesiastes, how there's a time for everything mm. and how there is nothing new under the sun that I feel mm. like a lot of us, because we haven't lived through anything that's happening now, it's kind of like a shock, like, oh my days, how can we get through this, 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 that and the other? But number one, it just shows that nothing is new under the sun, that God has seen everything. Number two, it also shows the sovereignty of God because God in his jurisdiction allowed this to happen. So within that, God will show his mercy. Like he was saying, like it's always the great things come after the chaos. Right now we're in the midst of the chaos and God is showing us that there's been bountiful examples in the Bible where there's been chaos and afterwards came great things. And this is just another one of the times. So again, it shows God's sovereignty and it also shows how nothing is new to God. Nothing takes God by surprise. There's nothing new under the sun at all. Yeah. Yeah, and even that, like seeing how it's written, kind of gives you that assurance of trusting in God. The fact that He's already He wrote this how many years ago, and we're seeing it now. And you know, like you said, like you know, the hope that comes after it shows that actually God is with us as well. And it's almost like, um, you know, it actually helps us to begin to trust in God. No, okay. We're not in this alone. Like God sees what's going on. He knows what's going on, and He's at work even in the midst of everything that's going on. So, yeah, I really just think that it's beautiful. And obviously, moving on to, um, from that, like, um, moving on to the next chapter, like ST said, you know, if we read from um, 4 to verse 13. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and um, it says, um, rent your heart and your garments return to the Lord your for he is gracious and compassionate, slow to anger and abounding in love, and he relents from sin calamity. Who knows he may turn and re, um, relent and leave behind a blessing, gave and drink offering to the Lord. And um like even um so I kinda wanna, you know, in this time, in this season, what do you think the role of the church and what we're meant to do you know it says rent your heart how are we meant to respond you know with everything that's going on i think while it kind of mentioned um, repenting in passing what do you guys think how can we do that i see yeah um i think like beyond repentance there comes a time of um i was saying to a few people i think a few days ago um, that this is a season of preparation, um, mm. preparation for so many reasons. Um, but one main reason being that what's to come after this, because we do know that the Bible does speak of tribulations and stuff like that, which yeah. must take place before the coming of Jesus Christ, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and those tribulations will be very grievous. So this is not even one of those tribulations. That's what we need to understand. This is not one of those like um, God beginning that period of tribulation. Do you get what I'm Mm. saying? If anything, this is an opportunity for us as a church to prepare ourselves um, for the times that are coming, basically. And that's not to speak about fear or anything like that. That's not what we're discussing here. We're just talking about being able to build yourself up, um, as it says in the Bible, build yourself up in the most holy faith, right? And um, it's an opportunity for you to, if you know that you are one foot in, one foot out type of person, there's an opportunity to get right with God. That's the repentance part. But beyond that, there's an opportunity for you to, um, and I would de- I define it as, um, or phrase it as building the spiritual capacity which all I'm 
what that means is essentially um, it's, it's the same principle of storing money in the bank. You know, you put money in the bank so that on a rainy day, when in such a situation as this, when they say stay at home, you are still able to order whatever you want, you know, just because you have money in the bank, just as an example. In that same way, a time will come where you will need to depend on the capacity that you have built to be able to help you to stand firm, if that makes sense. So I think as a church, there's just so much going on at this moment in time, but we can't afford to lose focus. Um, mm. We need to focus on what really matters because this COVID-19 is one of the biggest distractions of the year. And I call it a distraction because that's exactly what it, it, it actually is. Um, you know, uh, yeah. But anyway, you asked you one question and the, the answer that I would give is just preparation, basically. Use this time to prepare yourself. Um, just prepare yourself, you know, in whatever way possible. If you feel like you need to draw near to God, use this time to do that, um, so forth and so on. But I think that's how I would describe it. Yeah, yeah. Tommy? Um, yeah, I basically agree with everything that SC said. I think in terms of repentance, and I think one thing that God was teaching me like a few weeks ago, and like I said to you guys in team meeting, it's literally repentance comes before revival. And like ST was saying as well, repentance is literally a turning around. So when we say repent, it's not just like, oh, I'm sorry because I've sinned, or I'm sorry on behalf of the nation. Da, 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 da. It's literally like a shifting, like a turning around, turning back from our old ways and looking towards God. And after that comes the revival. However, like ST was saying, it's a time of preparation. We need to be prepared for what is coming. Like we literally need to be made anew. And like, literally, as it says in Matthews, like you can't pour um, new wine into old wine skin. We need yeah. to be ready for whatever God is planning to do and what he's trying to do after all of this has passed through. Yeah. And even today, just in my quiet time, I think one thing that God was teaching me is that God tears down, but he also rebuilds. Yeah. And like it says in Matthew 5, 5, is blessed are the meek for they shall inherit the earth. God is literally going to be exalting so many people in this next coming season we're going to see so many new things within the church as well because it's a thing where as a church we've had to remold our methods completely yeah. like a lot of preachers are not used to you know sitting at home and having to do the word most of them are used to standing in front of thousands hundreds of people and preaching like it's a complete shifting and God is literally saying that through that he's literally number one going to exalt the church because he's going to literally rebuild remold we had to adapt to different methods now and also exalting different people like within this we've seen how governments they're not they were not prepared for this at all at all at all and through this like so many new people young people especially are going to be building up and god is going to be exalting because so 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 many people but again it's about preparation and it's about using this time wisely like yes cool we have work to do great but at the same time every distraction we have to get close to God is completely gone now. Yeah. Like, in my opinion, I don't think there's any excuse really and truly to not seek God like you were before. If church was an excuse before, church is gone. If work was an excuse, work is gone. Literally anything that could possibly have been an excuse is completely moved away. So God, even though in his jurisdiction, he has allowed this to happen, at the same time, he will use this to show mercy. He will use this so that we can also draw near to him as well. Yeah, that's beautiful. And like, um, even just to add on to what you guys are saying, like one thing that emphasizing to me personally, even in terms of repentance, is working on our heart. And like when ST spoke about, you know, what's coming, it almost just clicked together. Like God wants us to repent and start working on our character because the, our character is what will sustain us in that next move of God that's coming, in everything that's coming. And it's like God wants us to be ready, not only in spirit, but also in our character and in everything that pertains to us. So, yeah, I really feel like this is, I feel like as well, this one, this is the greatest opportunity for the church. Like it's a really good opportunity for us to pray, to turn back to God and to really prepare for the great things that he has for us. And like um, even on the subject of prayer, I know Wale, you know, mentioned um, that our responsibility in this time 
is to pray, to pray for the nations, to pray for people. You know, he read um, the second Chronicles 7 verse 14, which talks about, you know, if my people are called by my name, will, you know, turn from their wicked ways and will humble themselves and pray that I will heal their land and stuff. So I just want um, us to kind of discuss that, okay, how can we be watchful and praying in this season? You know, who are we praying for? How are we praying in this season? You know? So if you guys have any tips or anything yeah. that you do. Yeah, like, um, I think at some point during the, the um, broadcast, Pastor Wale said, uh, when he was reading the scripture, he said, um, rend your hearts and not to your garments. So, mm. so it's beyond the outward appearance of, mm-hmm. of how, you know, <laughs> Especially in a time like this, everyone, it can, you can be so easily excited, you know? Um, especially when you see, like, every day someone's posting a scripture, every day, every day there's a new face on the internet. Like, every day someone's on social media leading this and leading that. And we love to see that, honestly. Because I think the more we are doing such things, the more um, it... it, it it deters people from completely isolating themselves. And I'm not even talking about social distancing, but just like trying to cut themselves off the network of, you know. Um, but that's, God is the one that sees the heart at the end of the day, right? Um, you know, he's really not impressed by the outward appearance of things. This is, once again, what the Bible teaches us. And so, as good as that is, we all need to make sure that we're doing that from the right place. Yeah. This is not the time for anyone to try and be attempted to gain fame or attempting to make a name for themselves. Yeah. It's not, yeah. it's, 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 this, is the, <laughs> this is the wrong time to, to try and come and do that. You know, this is not the time to try and build yourself a platform. Mm. It's really not the time. This is the time where if you're coming up to say something and lead the people to prayer and whatever it may be, you're doing that as an overflow of your secret place. Mm-hmm. Not, not doing that because you woke up one day and there was an opportunity. That's, that's, that's not what we should be doing. We need to yeah. be doing everything we're doing and as far as prayer is concerned from the overflow of our secret place. Mm-hmm. Does that make sense? So, and the reason why I'm saying that is because you can't expect the grace for intercession for whomsoever to drop on the people that you're supposedly leading if you yourself you haven't contacted that grace in your secret place you know so mm-hmm. so because else you we're just wasting time you know where and there's no time to waste truth be told yeah so if you if we're coming to lead the people and so forth and so on we need to make sure that it, and there's so many ways that i can't even begin to go into it but for instance um, and maybe Tommy can even share some, and both of you, to be fair, you know, sometimes you feel like a burden, right? You just feel mm-hmm. some some heaviness, and then because of that, you feel like God wants you to pray for this person or that person. Or if you're coming out to do such things, I think that's so wonderful, because mm-hmm. that automatically means that it was God that drove you to that. Do you get what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And and so many yeah. other things. Sometimes. You're just there and one scripture just whizzes into your mind and then you feel like God wants you to stand upon that scripture and use it to, to pray and so forth and so on. Um, anyway, so what I'm really saying is that, how, so your question is how can we, you know, be praying for the nations and, and, and uh, the government and so forth and so on. I think my advice is very simple. Make sure that you, as indi- we need to do it as individuals first, basically. Um, everyone should be seeking God for themselves first yeah. before we can come together as a corporate people and lift our prayers in that manner. Mm-hmm. You know, so that would be my first advice. I don't know if Tommy has anything to share on that. Um, yeah, like, literally what you mentioned, the secret place is so important. Heart posture is so, so important. Having a heart posture, like we said before, of repentance. Because I feel like we can so easily just be praying, yeah, God forgive the name, but he's coming from a heart posture of repentance. Because if you know the things that have been happening in all of these nations, 
it's like a burden like you were saying it's literally like a heaviness because you understand the heart of god it's like you have to imagine god is looking down on this whole earth he's seeing everything that is happening the known and unknown soon it will come to light because literally anything that happens in darkness comes to light but at the same time it's understanding the heart posture of god when he's looking at the earth what does he feel what does he think and it's also adopting that so i guess before we want to pray for nations we need to pray for ourselves is to pray that we're coming from a place of repentance we're coming from a place of um, humility we're coming yeah. from a place of mercy asking god for mercy yeah. to have mercy upon all of us we need to come from that place first before then we go and want to be doing exploits and just that and the other yeah. making sure and checking ourselves that we're cool it, like someone's always said to me especially about worship is that you can't take people to a place that you've never been yeah. so yes it's great that everybody's trying to do intercession that everyone's trying to do prayer warrior this and that but have you been praying before you can't come and lead people to pray on instagram or something when you yesterday god was waking you up and he said now nah, i'm going back to sleep today you need to come from that yeah. place and have a prayerful intercession in your heart. And like you said, it's grace. And like you said before, asking for more grace. Literally, like yeah. God says, if you ask for wisdom, he will give it to you. All we yeah. have to do is ask. So if you want the grace of intercession, you ask for the grace of intercession and God will give that to you bountifully. Yeah. But it's coming from that first also. But when we're praying for nations as well, I think it's so important to pray for those who are mourning, for those who are grieving, for those who have yeah. lost somebody, because we have to remember like, like people have actually been dying and even though it might not be necessarily related to us or we might not know anybody personally this is somebody else's reality so we need to also pray for that but yeah praying for nations praying from a place of repentance asking god to have mercy and asking for wisdom i think that's the main thing as well because mm. from after this these are going to still be the same people that are leading government. We need to ask God to have wisdom because in Romans, I know that it says that every single person in government has been appointed by God. So we need to make sure that those people as well are doing what God has called them to do and not just doing what they decided they want to do that day. So I guess that as well. But yeah. Yeah. No, beautiful. Yeah. And I was even going to say that, you know, the word of God sometimes is even our blueprint for prayer. Mm -hmm. and you know it says pray for all men and for those in government so that you can live a peaceable life like some of the prayers that we're looking to pray the word of god has really given us a blueprint on how to pray them and sometimes it's about us you know spending time in the secret place and looking you know if you feel like okay i don't know how to pray i don't know what to pray for look into the word like some there's like step by step guidance sometimes on some of these prayers on how to pray it and just like combining various but yeah, even, um, you know, just to, uh, just like, um, as in rounding up, kind of discuss, you know, while I mentioned something that, you know, that this is not like, um, this is not the end. Like, God, God is not done yet. Like, God is not done yet. He has more. And he kind of mentioned, you know, Joel 2, verse 28 to 29, where he says that, I'll pour out my spirit upon all flesh. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your young men will see visions. Your old men will dream dreams. And like that verse. And like, um, you know, just, um, so what do you, th like, what are you expecting God to do after this? You know, we know that God is not done yet. What are you expecting from this crisis? What are you believing that God is going to do after this? Very interesting question. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, I think one thing is that uh, God's intention in the midst of all of this is very great very big you know and to some degree I don't think anyone is quite anticipating it mm. from how I can sense it like, you know sometimes you just get the gist of like yeah revival revival and stuff like that but and, and also, one thing about revival, as we tend to just always use that word, is that the revival that's to come will not take the same format as the one of the old. Yeah. And so, to some degree, if you're expecting revival to happen in a manner that you've probably read of in past times, or someone has spoken to you about in past times, then essentially what you're doing is you're limiting yourself from experiencing this revival to its fullest extent. Mm -hmm. Why? Because God would definitely 
not coming as in the way that you we all expect that's that's for sure mm-hmm. um i say that for so many reasons when we read the book of um john and even um, in the book of luke as well when when john was born john the baptist when he was born um the bible records of how the bible records of how um there was you know his family his family were um, especially his dad it was his time to serve in a temple essentially it was a cyclical pattern a very repetitive form of doing church you know um and then john comes into the scene and he completely changes that you know from a young age he runs to the wilderness and until the day of his appearing and he comes and he preaches a message of repentance no one was expecting that do you get what i'm saying he came and he broke the traditions he broke the norms and stuff like that and i think that and there's so many accounts in the bible of of great similitude and what i'm really trying to say is that um we basically need to kind of just be be anticipating Oh, the phrase is great expectation mm-hmm. that's what waiting on the lord actually means you know when you when you check the the word or the phrase wait in english it means one thing but in hebrew it means it has seven definitions and one mm-hmm. of those definitions of, of the word wait means to wait with great expectation yeah you no know, you know with great expectation um that's not a normal type of waiting that's a you're expecting something so big mm-hmm. that's actually what waiting on the lord actually means you know so mm-hmm. so in that regard because what we're doing essentially we're waiting on the lord right we're just waiting yeah. to see what god is going to do and so we need to be waiting in great expectation yeah. for whatever god is intended to do because the truth of the matter is you cannot try to pinpoint that god will do this and he will do that and he will do this and he'll mm-hmm. do that but i can assure every one of us that if we just wait with great expectation then in whatever format that it may take we will be able to discern it and we will be able to partner with it accordingly yeah. so i think that's basically what i would say just for us to be waiting with great expectation um because no man knows the 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 exact thoughts and plans of god especially when it comes to revival yeah. so that's for certain yeah um, yeah, I guess I'll just add on to that. I feel like we're going to see a great move of God, literally outpour of his spirit. The word pour has been so repetitive for the past few weeks, I think. Pour, rain, outpour, those three particular words have literally been so evident. So I definitely believe that God is pouring out his spirit. And even like I was saying to ST earlier this week, as it says in Joel, and it says again in Acts about God will pour out his spirit on his people and young men will prophesy and this is that and the other. We are literally going to see that again, but it will be greater because yeah. the glory of the latter house is greater than the glory of the former. Yeah. So what we're going to see now is going to be even bigger even greater than that which has happened before but like st said and like we've been saying the whole way through is about preparation it's about partnering with what god wants to do because something can literally be like this and you can miss it so easily you can literally miss it so you need to make sure that you don't miss it that you're preparing your heart for what god wants to do and again in your secret time that you know we want to be used not used to almost but we want to understand the move of god but you need to understand god first you need to understand his spirit. you need to understand the way that he moves so that when this thing comes it doesn't come and hit you and you're just like oh my god you literally 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 god for yourself don't let it be a thing where revival comes and that's when you decide to pattern with god pattern first so that when revival comes it's even a greater experience because you know where god has taken you you know where god is going to take you but either way literally eyes haven't seen ears hasn't heard minds cannot comprehend what is about to do i can say that for free 100 percent. amen you both said you both said amen and i just want to end with you know in the um the quote that wale read to us in the message and it kind of said that, you know, it's this time is an opportunity to realign the rhythms of our heart where God becomes the center of our affections and our time again. Like, I feel like that just sums up, like, in this time, mm-hmm. why this was anticipating the great move that 
God is bringing, it's our time to realign ourselves back to him where he becomes the center of all our lives. Like right now, like you said, everything else has been stripped away. Work, uni, school, the things that we found to be the center of life is being stripped away by time for us to make him the center again. And just keep, keep believing, keep trusting God, keep you know pressing in keep praying get closer to him mm -hmm. and just yeah keep 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 anticipating and um i believe that you know like we said that we're gonna see a great move of god but right. yeah this is the end of our time oh. we'll see you guys again thank you for tuning